this is a TEDx event about generations. And we've heard several generations thus far. We've heard Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z. I'm taking you back a few more generations, to the year 1492, to be precise. If you paid attention in history class, you may remember this year, because this is the year that Christopher Columbus set out from Cadiz and sailed into the unknown worlds of the West. He arrived on an island that he called Hispaniola. Nowadays, we know this island as the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Now, for the rest of this talk, I want you to imagine that you were living on this island when he arrived. You were running barefoot. The weather was always nice, sun out, good temperatures. And you've never seen a European guy before. Now, everything that we, 21st century scientists, know about you, 15th century Hispaniolians, is what this guy brought back. Obviously, you had a life before him. But everything what we know from your life before him is still what he brought back. And we, as 21st century scientists, were interested in your life. What were you eating? Were you healthy? Were you sick? Did you brush your teeth? That's why in 2013, Professor Hoffman started the Nexus 1492 project to find out exactly how your life looked like, how your surroundings looked like. And as science starts digging, we usually find more than we expect. And in our case, that was ancient DNA. You may wonder, DNA in the Caribbean? What's the big deal? Well, DNA is like ice cream. It degrades about 150 times faster in warmer environments than in colder environments. That's why the oldest found DNA is from a 700,000-year-old horse bone, which is retrieved from permafrost, which is very cold. But we were interested in your life in the Caribbean, so we needed to look for other material, other methods, other options with the same protective effect as permafrost. And we found that. We found that in material that was previously seen as junk. Museum curators even removed it from teeth because it didn't look pretty. And this material is known as dental calculus. It's mineralized dental plaque, and it's also the white gooey stuff that the dentist removed from your teeth. So now that we found DNA, it made my job as a scientist a lot easier. Because you know that DNA allows us to unravel the stories of the past. But before I elaborate on the white gooey stuff, I first want to tell you how we got to finding DNA in dental calculus. Perhaps you remember that new methods were developed to translate the human genome. And once the human genome was translated, scientists were wondering, what else can we do with these methods? And they randomly sampled different sides of the human body. They sampled the skin, they sampled the gut, they also sampled the oral cavity, and they found DNA on all of these sites. We were wondering, can we also apply this to archaeological material? But what is left of you, 15th century Hispaniolians? It is not your skin, it's not your gut, but it is your dental calculus. So we first tested these methods on material that was um, from 12th century German monks. And we found DNA, surprisingly much so. But this was Germany. And Germany kind of has the same weather as we have here, kind of chilly, raining most of the days. And we were wondering, would these methods also work in a warmer environment? So we set out to the Caribbean. We went to the Dominican Republic, to Guadeloupe, and to Puerto Rico, and we got dental calculus from all of these places. And we applied these methods, and we found DNA. We found surprisingly much DNA, about 64 times more DNA than what we generally find. Usually, when we get DNA from bones or teeth, it is undetectable in the Caribbean. So dental calculus opens up doors into warmer worlds. 
Speaking of worlds, did you know that we have an entire world inside our body? I'm not talking about the bones and blood and tissue that make up our body. I'm interested in the inhabitants of this very small world, the microorganisms. All of the microorganisms in our body we call our microbiome. And our microbiome helps us survive. It helps us with everyday life functions like digestion, vitamin production, nutrient acquisition. And the dental calculus of our 21st century uh, dental calculus looks a lot like the oral microbiome. But how about your 15th century dental calculus? It looks surprisingly much so like our 21st century dental calculus. We see a lot of oral associated bacteria in dental calculus from 15th century Caribbean. This comparability allows us to track changes in the oral microbiome over time. But that's not all we found. I first want to have a closer look into the specific bacteria that we saw in the oral associated community. We found several bacteria that can cause disease, because you know that Oral bacteria can cause periodontal disease, gingivitis, periodontitis, especially these three bastards. And we found all three of them in our Caribbean 15th century individuals, indicating that although the soft tissue is gone, we can still, using ancient DNA from dental calculus, offer insight in these soft tissue diseases so that we now know that these people were suffering from periodontal disease. Another finding we unexpectedly found is, is we have found antibiotic resistance genes. And remember, we're still in 1492, when antibiotics were not yet introduced. How is this possible, you may wonder. Well, antibiotics are a naturally occurring product that bacteria use as a defense mechanism against other bacteria. And some bacteria, using their antibiotic resistance genes, have found a way to combat this defense mechanism. And this is important because antibiotic resistance is going to be the number one cause of death in about 20 years. I just read the paper this morning, Harlem's Dagblad. And in the paper this morning, it said that in 2025, if we don't act, 50,000 people will die of bacterial infection in the European Union alone every year. So understanding the development of antibiotic resistance and the rise of antibiotic resistance is essential in our capability to manage our health in the future. We also found virulence genes, and virulence means the ability to infect or damage. Since we found these genes, we can track whether certain bacteria became more or less infectious over time. So dental calculus allows us to get a glimpse into our life before the Industrial Revolution, when our lives were, more, uh, were less hygienic, our diets were more diverse, and antibiotics were not yet introduced. Even more promising is that we can get human DNA from dental calculus. Right now, we're looking into whether someone was male or female. But in the future, it may become possible to look at the more worrisome problems, like human genomic diseases, such as autoimmune diseases and cancer. And to summarize, this is not just exciting for me as a scientist, but it's exciting for you. Because last time I checked, we're not from the colder regions of this Earth. We're out of Africa. So dental calculus opens up doors to research into older and warmer worlds, but it also opens up doors into research to prevent disease in the future. So if you want to contribute to science for the next generation, please do not brush your teeth.